Um, so today, after a long absence from YouTube, um, we're going to be looking at the WASP system, um, the Gen 2 for the VSR, uh, and the current SRS model. Uh, and I'm just going to go over what you're going to get with each one, um, sort of the benefits of both systems, things to be mindful of, um, specifically when it comes to, to springs. But I suppose to get started, um, the SRS one, so this is my personal one, I've taken out the rifle. Um, all the other ones are here, I've just got to do some more QC checking and packing. But So firstly, when you get your package, you're going to get the piston body, which is one piece, um, and that's aluminium anodized black. Then you'll get some sleeves, so this one is the steel sleeve, so the heaviest of the three. Um, again, so SUS34 stainless steel, electroplated and laser engraved. Then you get the aluminium sleeve, which is anodized. Um, and again, that is also, um, I believe I forgot what I was gonna say now. Uh, so this is the medium weight one. Then you've got the polymer sleeve, um, these have something called a silk screen logo, um, so not the logo isn't as hard wearing on this. I mean, this one's been in my rifle and it's had easily sort of 10,000 shots through the testing period. Um, then you've got your spring guide, which is again one piece SUS34 stainless steel uh, and obviously polished. The, when you get it, you'll have some O rings. There's four O rings, two of them. Um, are half a mil smaller than the others. The reason for that is on the latest batch of SRS rifles, so the 2018 model, um, they've tightened the tolerances on the butt pad, so the O-rings, um, the original O-rings for what was available um, was a bit too tight, so now you'll get two sets of O-rings, one to fit anything up to the 2018 model, and then another set to fit the 2018 model onwards. And they, they basically just slip over uh, and sit into the two grooves that have been channeled out here. Um, and the benefit of this is it keeps the spring straight. It stops this from flapping about inside the butt pad because um, that is one of the main areas of sound on the SRS. The original spring guide and most aftermarket ones, in fact, um, when they sit in sort of the hole of the, the butt pad like that, they wiggle. So every time you shoot, this moves, which allows the spring to move. Whereas with this design, the fact that this has got some quite a bit of mass to it, as well as it fits flush in, sits in, uh, and it just doesn't move, and it allows you to do the hop mod, um, not the hop mod, sorry, the butt pad mod, which is basically where you put foam either at the top or the bottom of this to angle it up or down, and that allows for a slightly easier bolt pull. Um, but that was designed with this in mind, and if you look on my blog, um, there's a big, huge SRS guide on there, um, which shows you how to do that mod. Next, you get the rear receiver guide ring. Um, this basically goes on the rear of the piston's body uh, and rides along the receiver, stops the piston from moving up and down, left or right, keeps it completely straight. Um, this helps with consistency um, and bolt pull as well because each time the spring isn't being forced up or down, it's going back every single time in the exact same place. Then you've got your front ring. This slides over the front of the piston, so I'll assemble this in a second, but I just wanna show you what you're gonna get. Um, this is basically there to stabilize the weight and give you something to, to torque it up against when you tighten it. Then you've got the cup. So this is one of the features that offers the consistency that it does. Um, this is, again, it's in thousands upon thousands of rounds, absolutely no wear on it at all, seals as well as it does seals as well now as it did on day one and I've ran all sorts of springs in all sorts of conditions and it's still going strong. Then you've got your again stainless steel SUS34 rear sear and this is the correct angle um, so this is the exact angle of the existing sear other than 45 or 90 degree which some other companies have come out with um, so this is basically exactly what it needs to be works gives a nice crisp release um, the only thing to mention I, again I'll show when it's assembled is you might have to adjust the sear height because of the way this and the guide ring work 
Then you get three of these. These are basically little spacers. And what you do with these is if you're just over the limit, uh, if you're just under the limit and you want to get as close as you can without changing spring, you can basically pop these on. Depending on what spring you're using, you might be able to use all three, um, or you might just be able to use one. So like on the M150, you can generally get away with just the one spring. Um, and the reason for that is to do with the compression lengths, which is something else I'm going to talk about later. But they just drop on like that. They're very smooth. Um, these are aluminium and they're anodized, so they've got very low resistance. So when you've got a spring on there, they turn very well. And then the last few bits you've got is the standard air brake. The taper air brake, and then just the plug, so the non air brake fitting. And the reason you've got those is the standard brake gives the most suppression, but you can lose jewels um, when you get to a certain jewel level, again, depending on what spring. Uh, and the taper gives a little bit less noise reduction, but is a lot more forgiving in terms of retaining jewels. But again, it's very dependent on your setup. And to get this assembled, there's no tools required for this, um, which is one of the changes that's been made on the Gen 2. But for the SRS one, start with your piston body, take the cup, and you'll see that there's a channel cut out all the way around. You basically put it on from an angle like that, push it over, turn it, just to make sure it's snug, and that is on there. Next, you want to take the front securing ring. That just slides along. And then whatever weight you want, so because it just looks fancy, we'll take the steel weight. That goes on. Give it a couple turns and then just hand tighten it down. And then you've got your rear guide ring. That just slides over. Then you have your sear. So put that over, and this will only fit on one way as well. And then again, just snug that down. And that's pretty much the whole body of the piston built. And then you simply choose which air brake you want. So obviously this come out of my personal rifle, so I already know that I'm using the heavyweight with the um, standard air brake. Because these are machined out of nylon, and the threads are very fine, um, it is a good option to put one little wrap of PTFE, and I've just one because these are tiny threads, um, just to ensure that no air escapes. 90% of the time it doesn't, but if you're assembling it and you've got PTFE tape, there's no harm in doing it straight off the bat. And that is the piston assembled. And with the spring guide, I haven't got an SRS to hand, or not one that I can use anyway. Um, this basically just sits in the butt pad with these, the O-rings, depending on whether you've got a pre-2018 or a 2018 model. Um, and you basically just push it in, put a little bit of grease in the O-rings to help it, then pop that in, and then you're good to go. Um, Spring-wise, this can use, um, obviously, silverback springs, uh, PDI springs, whether they're VSR or the, slight, or the longer APS-2 ones. You can use a Garda M150 APS-2 spring. Um, the modified slash SSG springs work really well. Um, they're a bit, they're shorter than the Silverback springs, um, but they give a very easy bolt pull and they're pretty consistent as well. Airsoft Pro springs do not work in their setup. Um, they're very long, they've got a strange compression length, and they're not very consistent. Um, the maple leaf springs also don't work. Um, I did try to get the dimensions of the springs off of maple leaf before I did this, um, and yeah, I couldn't get an answer out of them until after I'd already committed to the design. So the maple leaf springs are too wide to fit in the actual diameter of the piston. So every, all the normal springs fit fine, but maple leaf is a no-no, and the Airsoft Pro is a no-no. Um, and that's pretty much it. As in, the no tools are needed. You can assemble it, you can change it on the field. So if you're out there and you're with the steel weight, let's say you're running an M140 
and you're just over the 2.3 joules, it's simply a case of taking the rear section off. Weight comes off, drop it down to the aluminium sleeve, tighten it back up. And you're good to go. And that will reduce your, again on heavy ammo, so 0.4s and above, that will reduce your ammo, uh, your jaw limit, sorry. And if it's still over, you can drop it down. So it's pretty much dependent on your setup. So I can say that I can get X1 to ever my rifle, but if you've got a different barrel, a different bucking, or a spring, a different barrel length, bore, it'll all change. But for me, on my 22 inch setup, with three spacers and an M140 with the heaviest weight, I can get nearly 2.5 joules which is very good from an M140 spring. So that's the SRS Wasp. So I'll put that to the side. Next, which is the newest one that a lot of people have been waiting for, is the the very first Wasp. Um, so this was out years before anything else. Um, lots of development and prototyping went into the first one. And then from the first one to the SRS, I learned some new things. Um, my ability to design changed, um, my ability to test and the access that I had to different resources changed, um, which ultimately ended up in me revising this design into something better. So, with this one, you're going to get aluminium piston body again, anodized black. You will get an aluminium sleeve. Again, anodized, uh, laser engraved, polymer sleeve with a silk screen logo, and the steel weight. So this is a brand new one. Um, you get the 13 mil spring guide. Um, so with this, this fits in every single cylinder, um, and it works with most triggers. It's obviously a 90 degree system, this piston, so it won't work with um, anything that isn't a 90 degree. You can still use this with 7mm springs, if you've already got a 7mm spring guard knocking about. But I personally do say 13mm springs are the, the better option for this. Get your rear sear, which is 90 degree. Again, stainless steel. I'm still running my original Gen 1 prototype, and that's been going for two, nearly three years, um, and there's no signs of real wear on it. Uh, you've got the sealing cup. This has been massively redesigned compared to the Gen 1. Um, seals phenomenally well. Um, and as you can see from some of my Instagram videos recently, this can give sub 1 FPS variants, which is extremely good. That sort of HPA territory. In fact, it can outperform some HPA rifles in terms of consistency. Um, and then you've got your air brake. So you've got your standard air brake, which is the slight, which is the longer one. Um, so this one is designed to work with cylinder heads that have a taper design, or if you want to use the air brake and sorbo pad. That's why this one's longer. Um, if you use this with a, one of the flat cylinder heads, you'll notice a huge drop in joules. But this one is designed as a, you can use it as is, or because it has got that extra bit of length, you can sort of cut this down as much as you want, taper it, whatever you want with it. Um, you've got the non-air brake fitting, and annoyingly I thought I had one, um, but I haven't got one here. But you get another air brake, which is a small stubby one. Um, which I've left in the other room. But the standard air brake that I use, which you'll get included, is one like this, but it's about two thirds of the length, maybe half of the length of this one. And then the big change is the guide rings. So the original one came with two standard fitting guide rings. So these are for TM spec cylinders. Um, so things like Lalax, Action Army, Maple Leaf, and obviously JG Simer, etc. And then for the, the cylinders with a smaller diameter, like Edgy PDI, um, you've got the white guide rings. And these allow you to use them in the, the smaller diameter cylinders, whereas previously you had to 
um, sand these ones down, whereas now, with no extra charge, these ones have been included. Um, and if you had a Gen 1 Wasp, you can contact me and I can give you the STL file for these, if you know someone that can machine or print them for you. Assembling this, exactly the same process as the SRS, so no tools needed. So you get your piston, get your cup, pop it on, give it a twist make sure it's on there. Take the larger of the two guide rings, so one's got a slightly larger opening and will go all the way down. One is short and won't go. So take your large one, so I'm using the standard guide rings, pop that on, snug it down, pick a weight, it will go still again just because it looks fancy, drop it on, tighten it down, take your rear guide ring, tighten that down, again you only need to hand tighten this, and then you see that on and then use your air brake or whatever you want so we'll put the air brake on for this one and with this one of the designs that I've made is the air brake sits recessed below this center ring and basically what that does is that helps absorb some of the shock so that you haven't got plastic hitting the cylinder head um, and if you are using a Sorbo pad, this really helps with dampening. Uh, and for people that do eventually end up dry firing, this is included to, to reduce the stress on the system because this will take the brunt of the force. And these cups are very, very strong um, and are very good force absorbing properties. And that is it. That is the VSR Wasp next to the SRS one. You can see the SRS one's uh, shorter and a lot chunkier. Now the things to consider with these, specifically the VSR one, is the springs, which I've got here. So these are a mix of random 13mm springs I had knocking about. Some of them I know which they are, what they are by the colour, others by the length. So if I line them all up, so they're all lined up here, and you can probably see this one is longer than the rest. We've got a couple of short ones here. You've got a very short one here, which is a clipped, and you've got all these. Basically, this long one, when it's compressed completely in, it will have a set length, and that length is something like seven centimeters, I think, six, seven centimeters if memory serves. And basically, you've only got so much room between the piston with the spring going back far enough to catch the sear. And some brands of spring have a high compression length for the power that they give. So a good example is, so this is an Airsoft Pro. It's only a 400 FPS spring, but it's too long. So it won't cock. Um, it might cock with some triggers, but with the triggers that I use, which are the Springer Custom Works, pretty much the only trigger I ever use anymore, um, the compression length is too long, so it doesn't allow the piston uh, to travel back far enough. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to manually be able to do this, but basically that when that compresses down, like so, the own, this one will just about fit, but the pull will be very tough. Whereas something like the Silverback Spring, the coils have a much smaller gap between them, so they compress a lot easier and the length when they are fully done is significantly easier you can see it goes all the way home so with that in mind I've put a list in the product description um, on both the skirm shop pages and on my blog say which springs that I've personally tested and work but for the, S for the VSR spring silverback springs all work Albeit the M150 may need a coil clipped, um, but I only found that with the ball trig. Otherwise, PDI VSR springs and APS2 springs work very well. Um, they're a lot shorter than a silverback spring, as you can see here. But this spring will give 
I can't remember which PDI, I think this is either a PDI 450 or a 500, but this will give over three joules with the weighted and air braked piston, whereas a Silverback M150 will only give about 2.6 joules, in my setup at least. Um, whereas something like the Garda APS2 spring, very difficult to cock, well not very difficult, but harder than all of these ones, just because it's a lot thicker, but it still fits, it cocks, um, and without an air brake you can get well over sort of three and a half to four joules if you use just the small brake or the plug. But otherwise that's the only thing you've got to be mindful of really, is just the spring length, but I've put in the description what, what, what springs work and what I recommend. Um, in terms of lubrication, um, a bit of silicon oil or a tiny bit of silicon grease around the cup is pretty much all you need um, and that applies to both the SRS and VSR pistons. Um, there are a few spares available for these um, but there was no break, there's like three breakages out of the first 400 pistons that I had made um, so they're made sort of on demand I can get them from my factory um, in batches of sort of 50 odd for like brakes and things like that and I might purchase some just to sell separately if people do want to toy with brakes or if they want to machine down a sleeve to get it slightly lighter things like that but that's pretty much it guys um there's more content over on my instagram um, where i've done some live testing and live shooting with these uh, setups the srs is out there a lot of people have got this um see so there's a lot of reviews out there and people that have tested these um, and there's a lot of oh, there's about 100 150 owners of the uh gen 1 vsr um, so you can again go on some of the groups forums and get feedback yourselves but the Gen 2 um, works really well in my opinion obviously I'm a bit biased, I designed it but for those of you who see my Instagram or Facebook videos um, I've done extensive testing on this I mean the first one was tested for years before I went into a production model um, and that testing has continued and evolved throughout the process but that's it guys um, I've tried to keep this video sh as short as I can well fitting in everything but um, Obviously, I'm on Facebook uh, and Instagram, both Snipe Mechanics, so facebook.com slash Snipe Mechanic and Instagram at Snipe Mechanics. Um, but yeah, like, share, subscribe. Um, I generally read nearly every single comment on YouTube because I don't have many subscribers, which is a bonus. Um, but yeah, like, share, subscribe, etc. If you've got any questions, let us know. Um, I don't know when this video is going to be posted, but within sort of a week or so of the video being posted, both of these will be available with the VSR one being available first because I've nearly finished all the QC on them. Um, and then it will be the SRS, which I'm just waiting on a final part for and packaging for both. And then they'll be able to go out and that'll be through myself, Skirmshop UK and Skirmshop Netherlands, um, and maybe one or two other retailers across Europe, the States. Um, but thanks again for watching guys. Um, and uh, I will see you soon. And hopefully this year I'm going to try and do a lot more videos um, I'll keep on Instagram and doing my original blog, but I'm going to try and now I've got a, a bench set up and a workspace. I'm going to try and get back into some actual video builds and reviews, etc. So thanks again, guys, and enjoy the rest of your day.